Hello again guys, it's DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room. Uh, yes, here we are, it is the latest Q&A, what would it be, it's the uh, June Q&A. Oh, can't keep up, it's been a crazy, crazy month for Slope's Game Room. I am working on a very big complete history video, uh, which is definitely taking longer than expected. Um, although it should have been, I, I would have always known it was a long one because it's Crash Bandicoot, the complete history. Um, that one is coming up, uh, plus I've been doing loads of vinyl unboxings as usual. And in fact, I've got a couple I wanted to show you. You remember the company Enjoy the Ride Records that sent me um, the Batman Arkham Knight, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective and uh, Nicktoons uh, vinyls that, that I bought from them what was it, maybe a month or so ago. Uh, they've sent me some other bits that I'm actually making videos for, uh, which is pretty cool. This sexy one here, <laughs> they're not video game related, hence why you're not getting a proper video of them. I'll just do a very quick slapdash unboxing, but check this out. The Ramones with artwork done by Rob Zombie, mental. Um, Stephen King linear notes, <laughs> it's so random. It's a tribute, so you've got people like Green Day, Offspring, U2, Red Hot Chili Peppers, but check the vinyl out. How sexy is that? That's so nice. So yeah, I've got the Ramones um, one from them. Ah, just chuck that over there quickly. And obviously the second one's exactly the same. Um, I'll get to the Q&A in a moment, wait <laughs> a sec. This one, which has got to be one of the coolest that SpongeBob LP. Look at this, look at this. How creative is this? Come on. That's, that's clever. Um, but well, I'll chuck a description down. Uh, they haven't asked me to do this, but uh, yeah, I'll chuck a, a link in the description if you want to go check out this store. They are, they are a wicked little company, it's got to be said. Um, and Doug? <laughs> the Doug 7-inch? How cool is that? It's not, it wasn't as big in the UK, uh, Doug, but um, it was definitely on. I, I used to watch it, you know, uh, back in my Nicktoons day. Little blue and grey splatter. And finally, the one that I really, really wanted. So happy I was able to get this. The Turtles, hell yes. But what's really cool about this, this one's a video game soundtrack vinyl. Um, I don't think it's worthy of its own video. There's only like three or four tracks on here that are video game related. But um, yes, yes, uh, from the, uh, obviously you've got the cartoon, the 1987 cartoon, obviously it's the American one, Ninja Turtles theme tune, rather than Hero Turtles, or how we had it here in the UK. Um, but it's also uh, from uh, Turtles in Time, music from Turtles in Time. And uh, I'll quickly show you that vinyl. There you go. Obviously, like, oozy green splat. I just wanted to quickly show you that, guys, before I got into the Q&A. Um, yeah, doing so much stuff with vinyl things recently, some behind the scenes, some that you're probably seeing in between this video. But this is the June Q&A, so enough of that. Let's get straight into it. Question number one from Tim Labonte, and he says, uh, what is the absolute stupidest thing you've ever witnessed in a game? Okay, uh, I haven't prepped for any of these, so let me think. I suppose video games themselves are pretty stupid, you know, streets of rage, you can completely heal yourself by finding, uh, uh, what is it, like a roast dinner or turkey or whatever under a dustbin, which is stupid, but it's just video game logic that's fine, obviously very stupid. Um, most recent things that come to mind would be stuff like, hmm, let me think, I suppose when I watched the, <laughs> in the Stick of Truth, spoiler alert if you haven't played Stick of Truth, and my god, go and play it, it's a fantastic game, uh, and that's coming from someone that doesn't like RPGs, the, um, what is it, when you're, <laughs> when you're inside the gay guy's arse and there's like old broken condoms and stuff, it, it comes to a point where it's not just things that you're laughing at for the, the sake of laughing at them, but this is just like, I cannot believe I'm doing this, I'm breaking through old disgusting Johnny's <laughs> full of white juices. It's the most, the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Most stupidest thing though, I suppose, yeah. Little stupidest thing will go with the, uh, the roast dinner under the dustbin, but craziest thing, I suppose that's where I've gone with the uh, answer. Question number two. Uh, what's your favorite non-video game related vinyl release? Well, for me, uh, my all-time favorite artist is Michael Jackson. My all-time favorite um, album is Dangerous, and I've got that on vinyl, so I'm gonna say that one. Although it is only black, just a normal black vinyl, and I really would like to see some nice imagery on there. Um, one of the other greatest albums of all time is Bad, maybe that one. Uh, also, my all-time, I'll show you, one sec. 
Hey everybody, I'm back. Okay, so yeah, like I say, that is my all-time favourite album. Um, it's a shame it's just on black vinyl, but it sounds fantastic and it's so cool to listen to that album. Any way you listen to it is really good. Got the Bad album there, that's really, really nice. Ugh, the uh, Bad logo on that side and the classic Bad Michael Jackson. Uh, on the other side, um, here's another very cool one that I've got, which would be the uh, record day release of Fort Minor's uh, The Rising Tide, which was, in case you don't know, my, uh, Linkin Park, Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park's rap album. And what's very, very, very cool about this, it's Coke bottle green, apparently. Um, <laughs> and because uh, I'm really into, like, very, very much into his art work that he does, you know, that graffiti style of this album. Uh, it's, the album only fits on three sides of a record and on the fourth side it's practically impossible for you to see I'll catch it in the light in case you can but there is actually an indent of the graffiti from the front cover that graffiti on the front and the only other one that I'm really excited to have because I've never seen it on eBay and things like that is my uh, uh, sealed up until about a year ago when I decided I actually want to start listening to stuff that I own, you know. Mad Capture Markets Osk Dis album. I'm a huge Mad Capture Markets fan. If you don't know who they are, listen to End Pulse and then go, oh yeah, Tony Hawk's free. Um, yeah, massively, massively into this Japanese techno metal band. It's just a black album, but uh, this was a promo one that was sent around to record stations and obviously no one in the UK played it. So this is straight from Japan record stations. Played about three times. Because uh, I only the album about 10 times in total on CDs and promo albums and what have you. So yeah, they're probably my favourites. Michael Jackson Dangerous is probably number one. Question number three from Ian A. Chapman. And he asks, what are your thoughts on educational and development games? Would you be getting them for your children when they are old enough? Um, yeah, for my children. They're brilliant. I'm not going to go down the roots of <laughs> LGR. I make a little joke about that actually in, my next, in, in the Crash Bandicoot video. Um, I'm never going to play them. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, there's too many quality games out there that are, that are on my bucket list. Like Stranger's Wrath, I've still never played that game. And I really want to play that. I've just recently got it on vinyl. I've listened to the soundtrack a million times, but still not played that game. Um, yeah, too many games on my back list to go check out educational games, unless they come up randomly in a complete history, say if I do Sonic and I talk about that Sonic teaches typing or whatever it was called. Um, no, nah, not for me, but that doesn't say I will not be uh, getting my little son into them. You know, he's already very excited about seeing what I'm doing on video games and things, and if that's a way to get him to, you know, learn the alphabet or something, then, you know, so be it. Question number four from Ryan Burford, and he asks, being a giant Sega fan, what are your thoughts on the 32X and their last attempt to milk the most of the Mega Drive? None of this Genesis Europe, <laughs> Genesis American crap. Um, yeah, I did sort of go over this in my theme park video. The, uh, one of the biggest gaming decisions of my life was do I buy theme park from the Mega Drive or do I get a 32X and Knuckles Chaotix? I went with Theme Park because I got that money sooner, you know, and I saw it in there, I'm gonna buy it, you know. Uh, but deep down, I always wanted to play um, Knuckles Chaotix. I played it on ROMs eventually when that sort of become available to me. But I always wanted my own copy and eventually I did get my own copy and a 32X and it is the only game I've ever, ever bought for my 32X. I have played a few other games for the 32X, but seriously nothing that stands out. Um, honestly, it was such a stupid move for by Sega. It really, really was. Literally no need for it whatsoever. Literally no need for the 32X. Uh, as much as I love to own it, and I'm, very ex I'm still so happy that I have my boxed 32X, I would show you, but it's in the attic under about 500 other boxed things that aren't, haven't been opened in the last 10 years. Um, but yeah, yeah, I love owning one, but fucking stupid. <laughs> especially, con especially considering the Sega Saturn came out, um, you know, right next door. It is great for collectors, but at the time it was such a silly, silly, silly business move. It really, really was. Question number five. Um, out of all of the videos you've put out so far, which one is the one you are most proud of? I would say um, one of the ones I'm most proud of would be the, what's his name? Johnny, 
Johnny Turbo, Johnny Turbo, oh, I forgot his name for a moment there. Johnny Turbo, that I, I spent so long cutting out, literally, what is it, like six or seven images of uh, comic books, basically, to make that whole thing animated. I was getting voice actors in, uh, obviously people like Larry, I got Rerez in. You know, all the, these people that two, two or three years earlier at the time, I used to look up to as like, oh my God, will I ever, ever get to at least speak to these guys or at least try and, you know, put myself in any kind of league with these people. And I actually got them all together and done a, uh, a video. Um, I got people from Retro Unlim over as well. Uh, Stephen over from Retro Unlim. Oh my God. Um, Stephen, sorry, Harry Yak from Retro Unlim. Um, yeah, that's probably the one I'm most proud of just because even though I didn't, you know, exactly turn around in hits or anything like that compared to say like a typical complete history does. I was so happy with that video. Uh, just such a lovely collaborative effort that I actually think I've done a video for my Patreons where I was just like guys I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm literally about to go on, uh, I was about just before I was going to go on Skype with uh, three YouTubers, uh, two YouTubers and, and Harry Ack that I didn't know of at the time and I was, uh, before I was a YouTuber. Uh, people that I was just, I can't believe I'm doing a video of these guys. How incredible is this? And yeah. Um, and to do that together, it was a little bit of a nerdgasm dream come true. So uh, obviously you know who all of those people are, but go and check them out if you don't or whatever. But I, I was so, so proud of that video, so proud to it. There you go, the uh, Johnny Turbo video. Question number six from Phil Lowlands, and he asks, oh he has a few questions. One, if you could pick any game soundtrack for, uh, for data discs to release, which would it be? Now, I want data disc because I think they're going to cover the Mega Drive on their own. They won't even have me to deal with them unless they did something. Ooh, I'm going to go back on what I was going to say Space Channel 5. Um, maybe even do a double LP with Space Channel 5 Part 1, Part 2. But, ooh, it's tough because I also like a few more Dreamcast ones like Jet Set Radio. It's such an obvious answer. But I think um, I would just like the first. Four, five Sonic games. I just Sonic One, Sonic Two, Sonic Three, Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic CD. If I was able to get those on vinyl and Data Disc do it so so well with the, with the original artwork blown up to a proportion that has never been blown up before, you, you're never going to find again. Um, uh, excellent, excellent, gorgeous um, uh, records of all their variants and all that sort of thing, and. Um, Oh, they would do such a good job, wouldn't they? And they would make that sound so perfect. So it's such an obvious answer, but the five Sonic games that I mentioned, one, two, three, Knuckles, and CD. And if you really want me to narrow that down again, three. Sonic three. That's what I want to see. Please. Also, it's sort of a Michael Jackson release, and I like collecting his stuff on vinyl. Question number seven. This one comes from Liam, and Liam asks, Guilty pleasure film or TV show. Now there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure. Everyone just likes what they like. But Dirty Dancing is a fantastic movie and I will not have any of you macho men knock me down for it. I love Dirty Dancing. I'm a massive poster of it. As you walk up my stairs, uh, which is there, obviously, as you walk up my stairs, there's a huge Dirty Dancing poster right in front of you. And if you turn around, so like the opposite side of the stairs, there's a massive uh, Pulp Fiction um, uh, poster that side, and sometimes we flip them around. But yeah, uh, my wife's favourite film is Dirty Dancing, my favourite film is Pulp Fiction, but that doesn't mean that I think Dirty Dancing is a bad film. I think it is an incredible film. Um, and Guilty Pleasure TV show, who um, obviously, uh, Friends, in my opinion, I don't care what people say, is the greatest TV show of all time, uh, followed by things like, you know, more obvious UK choices like Only Fools and Horses. Although some of the Americans out there might not know what that is. I remember when I was in a uh, one of the biggest whatever record CD shop that you have out there, and I remember seeing this tiny little BBC section and they had the smallest episodes one to three of Only Fools and Horses or something on DVD. I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's such an incredible show to have on such a tiny little area. Um, guilty Pleasure TV show, I really don't know. Um, I really like The Amazing World of Gumball, but I don't see that as a guilty pleasure. I like cartoons and I'm not ashamed to admit it. You know, I like cartoons, so that's probably the, the kiddiest show that I've watched or did watch. I haven't watched it for a while. Um, Amazing World of Gumball. I can't really think of anything other than that, if I'm honest. Um, I, I don't see it as guilty pleasure. It is, it is me, you know. I, I love watching kiddie-based cartoon shows. Um, yeah. 
let's go for the amazing world of gumball because it's obviously aimed at a younger generation and uh, i was watching that uh, after the, me being 30 years old question number eight from dj from team not crash uh hey guy how you doing um <laughs> dj he's a cool guy okay so uh what made you start the complete history series in the first place and how do you collect all the information on the game's development and stuff um, um all over the place so i the first complete history video i'd done was streets of rage and I just called it the complete history. I, I, you know, it was the complete history. I think I messed up a couple of times. I think if you go back and watch some of my earlier videos, there might have been some called the complete story, like when you get to the title card in the video when I used to do them differently. Um, so I never had it as, I never thought of it as a proper playlist called the complete history. And if I remember correctly, although he may go back on this, and I was speaking to Larry one night and he said, you should make the complete history video. They're the ones that seem to get you the most views. You should try and turn that into a proper playlist. And instantly, you know, light bulb went off, started checking out that analytics and stuff, and I realized, wow, like my top 10 videos, like eight of them are complete histories and stuff like that. So, bloody run out of space on the car, didn't I? Jump cut, whatever. Yes, um, it, it's just, yeah, it, it came naturally. It's something I just called a video to complete history, and it just started evolving from there. Uh, I think if you look back in my early days, I was only really pumping out a complete history every few months or so, until I really, started to become obsessed with learning about games and you know, obviously making the videos, they were obviously my most popular as well. Um, so yes, uh, it just came naturally. Like I say, it was Larry that originally said you should turn it into a series. So uh, I did, there you go. In regards to where I get that information, it's um, a little bit from everywhere. I, I read a lot of Retro Gamer, that's quite cool. Like, oh, that's a cool article, I'll read that for a future episode when I wanna do Knights, for instance. That's one coming up. Um, yeah. Sometimes I may find a crazy article online that talks about some very specific, strange history piece. Um, other times I just cannot find anything out whatsoever. The, the, the one that's always stumped me is Power Stone. I can't find any kind of development history on Power Stone. I would love to do a Power Stone complete history. Uh, I did go to the developer, because um, all I could find was things like Devil May Cry, which is one of the other games that he did. Uh, so yeah, sometimes I don't get lucky, like that time. And other times I do get lucky. I wanted to find out the complete history of a certain Sega platformer. It's one that's coming up, and there was nothing online. And thankfully, I did get a hold of the, um, <laughs> you may work it out from what I'm saying. Uh, I was able to get a hold of the guy that made this particular Sega puzzler and found out that there is a number two that was sort of never released. There's no footage on YouTube whatsoever of this number two game in this series of Sega puzzlers. But I have a copy. I have a copy of a Sega game, probably only a handful of other people in the world have. Uh, it's a complete history coming up within the next month or so. Um, uh, I won't talk too much more about it. So yeah, basically to answer your question, it comes from anywhere. Um, you know, I, I, I read magazines, I read uh, blogs, I, I look at other YouTube videos, uh, anywhere I can find to get a lot of information. And sometimes, like for instance, the Crash Bandicoot video, I've watched about three or four other sort of complete history type videos. I've read articles in places like Retro Gamer, found interviews from the developers from really, really old magazine file scans that I've managed to find, and just collated it all together and tried to make, you know, the complete history. That's what I call the videos. I need to try and get as much information as possible. Hence why they take so bloody long. <sighs> Question number nine. And this one comes from Tiago Piara dos Santos Silva. And he asks, do you like Shining Force? Um, no, uh, what am I saying no? I, I, I've just never played them. It's never a game that, you know, oh, I need to play Shining Force. It's never on the, you know, the back burner of games, the backlog of games that I need to play. I just, I've never played them. They're, they're RPGs. I've got no interest in playing RPGs. I'm very, very sorry. I know there would be, uh, the numbers would roll in so much if I did a Final Fantasy Complete History and maybe one day when I do this full time, 10 years into the future I will eventually do a Final Fantasy Complete History or something like Shining Force or Dragon Quest or you know any of these RPG type games but I just haven't got the love to sit down and go through them all now, definitely haven't got the time and it's just not the biggest amount of interest for me there, maybe the development is sort of interesting I suppose because you know that is always interesting but 
Um, I've never played them, I have no real desire to play them, and he asks, do you make uh, do you make video of the complete history of Shining Force? I don't see me making a complete history uh, of Shining Force anytime soon, I'm very, very sorry. Um, thank you for being a Patreon. <laughs> And finally, finally, I did run over some of the uh, other questions. Someone asked me three and I only answered one. Who was that? Who was that? That was uh, Phil Lowlands. I'm sorry, I only answered one of your three questions. So, the other two, here we go. Uh, Phil Lowlands, number two. Will you get drunk again and do more vlogs? I'm sure I will. For people that don't know what he's talking about, I did a Patreon-only vlog of my adventures at Download Festival. It's a little 10 minute video of just me being stupid, running around, or five minute video, whatever. Acting like an idiot with my friend Kirby. Um, just getting drunk and, you know, watching System of a Down and DJing and meeting up with my old friend Smiley Dave. Link in the description. Go and check his channel out now. Please, it'd mean the world to me if you subscribe to Smiley Dave. Um, yes, yes. Uh, it will happen. Probably next year at download. Who knows? And what was the other one he asked? What was the other one? Uh, what was my first set of turntables? Ugh. Uh, I actually, I started on vinyl, uh, and they were a couple of Synergy vinyl decks, God knows what the model number was. Um, their speed change was I think about 4%, if anyone knows what that means, like slow the speed down, speed the speed up, that's so you can get them the same speed to, yeah, DJs are not what I'm talking about. Um, so I could never do what I do now, where I jump from genre to genre, uh, then it was just, I play house, or I play techno, or I play drum and bass, you know, it had to all roughly, it had to all be the same in one set, because the speed was so small. Um, the speed change was so uh, little. Um, so yeah, a couple of synergies, and also I, I had a couple of, uh, uh, CD decks um, from them, but they were actual re proper CD decks that you would see like on a hi-fi system, you know, they weren't like those ones that you see now, the turntables, it was before the days of CDJs and American DJ CDJ type things, these were just record decks and they would also have a little dial that would go left and right of the speed and the only way you would get it is you'd try and get it in your head uh, and you'd skip the button, skip the button, skip the button, skip the button to try and get it into the right uh, uh, speed from the other CD and uh, it, it was an. I learned how to DJ so such a such a yeah. It was really really hard. It was really hard to DJ those stuff. But I learned how to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, now I use obviously CDJ type equipment, Pioneer stuff. So uh, yeah, there you go. Sorry, Phil. I sorry got, didn't realise I missed over your questions. <laughs> um, guys, that is it. Nine questions this month. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so um, yes, the next Complete History video is going to be the Complete History of Crash Bandicoot. That is coming, mm, hopefully within about a week. Uh, I'm, I'm quite far into the development of it, um, and I mean, I, I don't want it to rain because I'm enjoying the bloody hell out of it and uh, playing all those old games that I haven't played in such a long time. Obviously, the Insane Trilogy, I'm loving that. And Crash to Insanity, not enough people give that game uh, the credit it's due because that is a good game, Crash, Crash to Insanity. That is a good game. Um, anyway, more will be explained in the complete history. Other than that, I am working on a very, very, very sexy um, podcast. It may even be live by the time you see this. I am working on a podcast of a couple of good, good YouTube friends. I'm sure you can work out who they are. Uh, yes, uh, that's coming very, very soon. So do keep an eye out for that. That's probably about it. Um, there's another complete history, complete history video coming up after the uh, Crash Bandicoot one that will hopefully be in this month as well. And oh my god, yeah, another big bit of news. By the time you see another Q&A video, I will be with baby number two. So very excited about that. Our young baby, uh, I won't say the name that we've got given yet. <laughs> Maybe not broadcast that to the world yet. But our little baby girl is coming um, on the 1st of August. So less than a month to go. So by the time you see the next video, next Q&A video, I will have a baby. Ah! I'll show you all the baby. <sighs> Exciting times. But look at that, all this stuff going on in my life and I still make videos for you. This is DJ Slow. Oh, no, sorry. Let, let, Patreon plug, if you want to be part of Q&A videos and all that sort of stuff, then follow links in the description, top comment, all that sort of thing, uh, to be part of next month's Q&A. And um, yes, I, I haven't got nothing else to say. I'm gonna stop rambling, I'm very excited, and like a kid, because I've just got some new records, uh, which I'm gonna go listen to on my uh, pizza record player up here. Yes, guys, this is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all 
next time. Oh yes, the Disney videos are coming back.